Have you ever realized that we rarely use up an entire pencil? Usually, when it becomes just a small stub, we discard it and get a new one. The small pencil, once it can no longer write, is often forgotten. But have you ever wondered what it takes to create this pencil? Today we will embark on a dramatic and surprising journey following a small yet courageous warrior, the pencil. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to avoid missing out on exciting videos from Captain Discovery. Now, let's get started. Let's travel back in time, thousands of years ago. In ancient times, the Romans used a tool called a stylus, made of lead to write on wax tablets. But the history of the pencil doesn't stop there. One stormy day in 1564, in Barrowdale, England, a shepherd accidentally discovered a massive lump of graphite under a tree that had been struck by lightning. It seemed like he had found a treasure, but it was just a dirty black substance. However, this graphite had a magical ability. It left black marks everywhere. Initially, the locals used it to mark their sheep. Graphite was valued because it left darker marks than lead. But this mineral was so soft and brittle that it needed a holder. Initially, graphite sticks were wrapped with string. Later, the graphite was encased in hollow wooden sticks, and thus the wooden pencil was born. Nuremberg, Germany, the birthplace of the first mass-produced pencils in 1662, driven by companies like Faber Castell, founded in 1761, Lyra, Steidler, and others, a dynamic pencil industry developed throughout the 19th century industrial revolution. And so, people began to write with it, and the first pencil came into being quite unexpectedly. From these whimsical beginnings, pencils gradually became perfected and indispensable in our lives. So, how are they made? Follow me to explore the journey of the familiar pencil. First, we start with pine trees, gentle giants standing in the forest. Look closely, and you'll see that they have no idea they're about to become adorable pencils. They just stand there, tall and silent, unaware that their fate is about to change. The wood must be soft. Yeah, because we, we want to have a very smooth uh, sharpenability in the pencil. And we have this with this species, which is the pine Caribe hondurensis. And this species is also really well adapted to this kind of region because they can survive really well to very dry seasons, at least for six months. Did you know about 14 billion pencils are produced worldwide each year? Can you imagine this enormous number? 14 billion pencils are enough to draw a line to the moon and back twice. Wow, can you guess how many pine trees are needed to produce these 14 billion pencils? This producer owns 6,500 hectares of cultivated land out of a total area of 9,600 hectares. Each year, more than 300,000 saplings are planted, which means an average of one truckload of saplings per hour. Here's a 60 foot, about 18 meter tall tree. A sharp saw slices through the trunk and the massive log falls creating a resonating sound in the forest. But don't worry, the journey of the pencils is just beginning, as the logs are transported to the factory, where they will undergo a magical transformation. At the factory, the wood is cut into small pieces and then into thin wooden slats. These slats are like crunchy biscuits, except they're not tasty at all. But wood is only part of the story. The next step is preparing the pencil lead, also known as the sole of the pencil. The lead is made from graphite, which is mined from deep underground. Graphite and clay are finely ground and mixed with water to create a special paste. This paste is then compressed and baked at high temperatures to harden. Next, the pencil leads are dipped into a vat of melted wax and then cooled to ensure the wax adheres firmly to the leads, enhancing writing smoothness and pencil durability. And here's an interesting fact. By simply adding colored wax during the mixing process, we can create vibrant colored pencils. 
Did you know that pencil lead isn't made of lead? The term lead in pencil lead originated from a historical misunderstanding when graphite was discovered in the 16th century and thought to be a form of lead. The pencil body and lead are now ready. But what comes next? Of course, it's time to insert the core into the pencil body. The thin wooden slats are grooved to hold the core, like making a sandwich. But instead of meat or vegetables, there's a small graphite stick in the middle. You can imagine the pencil being pressed together, solid and neat, like a warrior ready for battle. Finally, the pencil is painted and decorated to make it more attractive. This is when manufacturers unleash their creativity, transforming ordinary pencils into mini artworks. It may seem finished, but no. Before reaching consumers, pencils must go through two crucial steps. To ensure each pencil meets standards, they must undergo rigorous quality checks. Pencil manufacturers check the graphite lead hardness using a special scale from 1H, hard, to 9B, soft. This ensures that pencils can write smoothly on various paper types. After that, the pencils are sharpened and inspected by workers. After passing quality checks, pencils are carefully packaged and ready for distribution. They are sent to stores where they'll begin a new journey, serving people's writing needs. After a long and arduous journey, the pencil is now ready to contribute to writing new pages of knowledge. If you're concerned about the impact of pencil production on forests, pencil manufacturing facilities commit to using wood from sustainable sources, protecting natural forests and ensuring the sustainable development of the pencil industry. Thanks for exploring the pencil production process with us. Enjoy exploring factory production with us? Like, share, and subscribe to Captain Discovery for more fascinating insights into manufacturing.